Welcome to True 32, the buck stops here. Denver Broncos franchise rebuild. The Denver Broncos were the Super Bowl 50 champions, led by quarterback Peyton Manning, future Hall of Famer. The Denver Broncos are now a three-time Super Bowl winning franchise. 1998, 1999, 2016. They've had great quarterbacks in their history. John Elway. Peyton Manning. When you take a look at how successful they were in 2015, it was all built around the vaunted defense that they had. First overall with a 12 and 4 record. They had the number one overall defense in the league last year, giving up 283 yards per game. They had the number one pass defense in the league, only giving up 199 yards a game. And they had the number three rush defense in the league, giving up a tiny itsy bitsy 83 yards per game on the ground. Take a look at what led them to that success. You had guys like Vaughn Miller, 11 sacks last season. Take a look at that secondary you have a keep to lead. Chris Harris Jr., TJ Ward playing up in the box, delivering the big hits. But what happens when your Hall of Fame quarterback retires. You are now put into a situation where you don't have a quarterback. You head into the offseason and you take a first round selection, 26 overall pick, Paxton Lynch. This is a quarterback that started for 38 games for the University of Memphis. His career, he completed 63% of his passes, threw for over 8,500 yards passing, 59 tutties, only 23 interceptions. And if that's not enough for you, for Paxton Lynch, he finished and ranked number two all time in University of Memphis history in passing yards, passing tutties, and passing completion percentage. What if you don't want to start Paxton Lynch? Then you're going to have to maybe go to a guy by the name of Mark Sanchez. J-E-T-S. Jets, 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 Jets. Mark Sanchez was selected fifth overall in the 2009 draft. Mark Sanchez has produced over 10 fourth quarter comebacks or overtime in his seven year NFL career. And if that's not enough for you to say you should start Mark Sanchez, he ranks number one all time in playoff history for New York Jets football and passing touchdown. But the question becomes to you, how do the Denver Broncos rebound? Do we stick on the defensive side of the ball or do we focus around our quarterback situation? Do we start the young and upcoming Paxton Lynch? Is it too soon to put him in the game? Experience Mark Sanchez, find out next. On True 32, the buck stops here, a Denver Broncos franchise rebuild. All right, guys, first things first, we have to decide this quarterback situation. We have three viable options, Paxton Lynch, Trevor Seaman, and Mark but fumble Sanchez. Let's take a look at some of these key ratings these guys have and decide who we're gonna go with. All right, right out the gate, you can see Pax and Lynch, the highest overall with a 74. Mark Sanchez, 72. Sick haircut, great tan. And our favorite guy right here, Trevor Seaman. Gotta love the mobility right here from Lynch, a 79. That's a kind of a sneaky category for him. 84 Excel, 83 Agility? This guy's a stud muffin, 93 Throw Power. Good, good sack, good Mac. His DAC, not bad. Guys, this is a no-brainer. Uh, unless Mark Sanchez somehow comes out the gate during a, an injury or something, like Paxton Lynch is the guy. We're, we're gonna go with the rookie. If we take a look at our halfback situation, we have CJ Anderson. He is a ball control style running back, but I'm a little worried about um, our, our third down receiving option. Ronnie Hillman, okay. He's got some good speed acceleration stats. Then you got Devontae Booker, rookie. He could kind of fill in and become a, a, a primetime player. And then Jawan Thompson here. But uh, I'm a little concerned about a third down option on this roster. Now you take a look at this. This is the standout position here for the Denver Broncos. Demarius Thomas, six foot three. 88 overall, you got Emmanuel Sanders, 5'11", 90 overall. Both these guys have speed for days, as you can see here. Good acceleration and agility as well. And look at that strength by Demarius Thomas. That's pretty crazy. He's gonna be an absolute stud muffin uh, in the run blocking game with that strength. Definitely gonna wanna have Demarius Thomas be your go-to guy in the red zone. All that height, all this size. He's got great catching traffic as well as great spectacular catch. We're actually going to roll with uh, with Benny Fowler as our slot receiver. He's got a little bit more uh, speed, and we're actually going to go ahead and actually put Cody Lattimore as our number four receiver. And we're demoting Jordan Norwood at 84 speed. That's just not going to get it done uh, to be shifty enough on the interior of the field 
Uh, so we're gonna go with Fowler and Lattimore to back up in the slot. Take a look at our corners here. This is what I was talking about. This is a one of the best uh, lineups in the game here in the secondary. You got Chris Harris Jr., 93 overall, Akeep Tlaib, the big body, six foot one, attitude style player, and then Bradley Roby, the younger veteran, the nickel corner, who can match up just about against any uh, opponent that uh, that it might have that would have a speed option. 93 speed is absolutely bananas right now in this game in terms of uh, downfield speed. Another area that the Broncos excel in is their linebackers. Brandon Marshall, think a Luke Keekley type. This is a guy all out style coverage. He can roll in the middle of the field. Play recognition is huge in Madden 17. It helps you be able to stop the run. So he'll be a big time run stuffer in the middle of the field, but is also be able to match up uh, man to man in zone coverage situations uh all out coverage that's where brandon marshall really excels of course you got guys like demarcus ware and of course von miller himself uh shaq bear under the radar one of those guys that can rush after the quarterback has some good measurables good athleticism only two-year pro i expect a lot of good things out of him here uh, as we push towards the playoffs in this franchise rebuild if there's one area I'm a little bit concerned about for the Broncos here, uh, it's the fact that they don't have a lot of beef on the defensive line. Uh, right now you can see Derek Wolf has the high strength of 89 as a left end. The interior of our defensive line is really bothersome. Uh, take a look here, you got you know, you know got 86 strength with Sylvester Williams. Darius Kilgo, but he's a 67 overall with 92 strength. Uh, these are some things that really worry me about the interior of this defensive line. Will we be able to stop the run? Not a lot of block shed in this scenario. The only guy that really seems to have it is Derek Wolf but he's got to play on the outside with the 96 block shedding. So uh, this might be a spot where we look to try and move some guys, maybe see if we can pick up uh, um, a bigger interior defensive lineman, a veteran, if you will, uh, to be able to bring into this roster to help us push towards the playoffs in this season. All right, here we are. We're going to have to set our first big decision of the year. What are our season goals? Seven wins. Here's the thing. I think with this defense, I think this defense makes us a playoff team if we can manage uh, uh, our quarterback situation. So seven wins, not really what we're, we're targeting here. I think we have to just say make the playoffs. If we can make the playoffs, I would consider this a successful season. Uh, that's really our goal for the year. Get into the playoffs, see what we can do from there. But it's all going to rely on our defense and can our quarterback situation, can we manage it successfully? All right, guys, this is the player we're going to target. We want Vince Wilfork. We need him on our defensive line. If we're going to be all about defense and dominate the line of scrimmage, this is our guy. We have no choice but to go for him. He's a veteran. We're looking to move uh, Shaq Barrett to get this 95 strength, 91 block shed, 94 tackle, 94 play rec, 94 awareness defensive lineman on our front. He's not going to get after the quarterback with 75 power move or 43 finesse move, but he will be an absolute hog in the middle of the field of our defense. Dang. Who can we add? We'll give you another another young linebacker, Shane Ray. The Texans are not interested in the players you've offered. What? Ugh. 0 for 2. 0 for 2 on trades, boys. Let's try a pick. Let's let's give him a pick. Third rounder. For, for This is a great deal. I'll get you into this Vilms Will Fork today. No questions asked. Not a lease. You own it. You tags, you tails, you tags. I'll get them to you today. Trade was accepted. All right, so we got big, big Vins on the squad. We got our roster set. Now let's take a look at what our schedule looks like this year. First game against the Panthers Super Bowl rematch. Got to think we're probably going to drop that one. Uh, but then we head over and play the Colts. And then at the Bengals, at the Bucks. I think in that stretch, we can get two wins. And out of our first four games, end up being two and two. Uh, and then as we head into the second quarter of our season, we're going to end up playing the Falcons, Chargers, Texans, and Chargers. Uh, you know, that looks to me like a stretch potentially where we could maybe go 4-0. All those teams we have the ability to beat and we're at home for three of those games. So if we don't go 3-1 and one in that stretch, this, this is where we're going to make the playoffs. If we have a poor stretch in our second quarter of the season, we won't make the playoffs. As we head into our third quarter of the year, we're going to end up playing on the road. This is going to be a difficult part uh, where we play the Raiders, the Saints. We have a bye week. And then we finish it off with the Chiefs. This is a tough stretch. Raiders are up-and-coming team, a division rival we are going to play. Saints, anytime you're playing Drew Brees at home, never a tough, never an easy matchup. 
We get a week to rest. Then we play the Chiefs, another division rival at home with that vaunted defense that the Chiefs have. Uh, this will be another tough division rivalry matchup. As we go to the home stretch, we end with Jaguars and Titans. You think we could probably get victories there. Although the Jaguars are emerging as one of the better teams right now to come out of the AFC. And then the Patriots probably going to drop that game. Homerism. And then we end with two matchups in the division that will decide our fate. Do we get in the playoffs or do we not? Let's take a look at some of our offensive and defensive philosophies for this season. We talked about our offense. Do we want it to be? What do we want it to be? Zone run, power run? Uh, I really think that we can't really expect our quarterback to chuck the ball around the field. Um, I want to stick to a, a West Coast style offense. Defensively, we're going to roll with an attacking 3-4. Uh, we have the versatility in our secondary to be able to match up uh, in man-to-man -man coverage, so I really do like an attacking 3-4 style defensive scheme. Our first halfback, CJ Anderson, it was a one cut, but we actually like him as a power back. He needs to run north-south, use that trucking ability, and get down the field and run the ball in the middle of the field. All right, guys, we'll be back after week four. We'll see you in week five. We're hoping to go two and two in this stretch uh, as we head into the second quarter of the season. Uh, would you look at that guys we started the season our first four game stretch we went three and one and we're still third in the division Raiders 0 and 4 I wonder if they have some injuries going on over there in Oakland uh, but take a look at how strong this division is shaping up to be 4-0 Chargers the 3-1 Chiefs and the 3-1 Broncos we lost our opening game against the Carolina Panthers as we anticipated a uh, Super Bowl 50 rematch but then we've got on a three game winning streak uh, thus far and Pax and Lynch has been playing very well for a rookie quarterback. Anticipated, we've put more of a focus on our run game as well as a West Coast offense throw underneath. And it, he did actually miss a couple plays where Mark Sanchez had to come in. Sanchez played well, 62% uh, completion of his passes. were Same, not really getting it done out of the backfield. Uh, but we are three and one. I think our defense is doing exactly where we need to be, but our run game, a little bit of alarming. We'll have to see how do we adjust our scheme to kind of see if, how we get the run game to be revitalized in this offense. Slot receiver, you can see in this West Coast system, five tutties right now for Benny Fowler. 21, he leads the team in receptions, but he's also injured. This is a bad problem for us right now. He has a broken wrist. Our leading receiver on the team is going to be out for seven weeks. So it's going to be a big, big, big role here uh, for uh, Cody Lattimore. It's a big opportunity for him. We're going to switch up our halfback. He was the power back. Uh, we're, we're going to actually go back uh, and have him go back to uh, the one-cut system. Uh, see if this is going to help him a little bit. He does have that good ball carrier vision rating. And the one cut is going to be uh, a, a rushing style attack that might be better suited for his skill set. Next in week nine, remember this stretch here, we're anticipating to go three and one. This is a big time stretch here. So if we could come out of this three and one, we'll be six and two. We'll be looking really good as we head into the second half of the season to get into the playoffs. Wow, guys, that's a really bad stretch we just had there. We went the complete opposite. Uh, we actually thought we might go one and three in the opening part of the season. Instead, we go three and one there. And then our last stretch of four games, we go one and three. Great. And 24 touchdowns, 22 inter uh, 24 interceptions. You can see Mark Sanchez has played some time, uh, but again, not necessarily alarming. We'll take a look at some of our rushing stats. You can see CJ Anderson, a little bit of a bump in production, but not much to write home about. All right, guys, we'll see you guys after our next stretch of four games. We'll be heading into the last quarter of the season. This next three, uh, four game stretch will decide our fate. Will we have a shot at getting into the playoffs? All right, guys, it's a big part of the season. Week 12, we're not actually through the second half of the season yet, but we're 5-5 five and five going against the Chiefs. We're at home 5-5. Five and five. We're going to bring play the moment to you guys here. Follow along and see if we can get out of this game with a W. This will put us in a big-time situation to be able to make the playoffs. All right, here we go. First quarter. We're gonna, we don't play any of the moments here. That's just, we just simulate the whole thing here. Just kind of see how it goes. All right, we're down 3 nothing already. Uh, we blocked the field goal. Let's go, kid. Denver up. Let's go, Paxton Lynch. Have a day. Okay, Kansas City goes up. Can request scored. Mark Sanchez is in. Mark San What happened to Paxton Lynch? Oh, no. Mark Sanchez coming in hot. 
Mark Sanchez playing great ball. Mark Sanchez, touchdown to Benny Fowler. Benny Fowler back in the action. All right, this is turning out pretty well. So we're gonna have to check to see what happened there, but it does appear that Paxton Lynch might have been injured and Mark Sanchez comes in. Does this mean we start? Uh-oh, okay, Mark, be great. Time to be great, Mark. Time to be great, Mark. We blocked another field goal? Oh no. We need, we need to stop, boys. We need to score. All right, fourth and one. Fourth and one, Mark Sanchez. No. Our ball? We got a score. They just punted again. Okay, our ball back. Fourth down. It's over. Paxton Lynch was hurt now? Guys, it's not looking good for us to get in the playoffs right now. This might be our second true 32 where we don't get into the playoffs. We have to win out right now. Uh, if we take a look at the rest of the AFC standings. We do have a, some type of slim chance. Uh, we, we need everyone to lose. We have a slim chance, so we do. If you take a look, uh, we could fight for this last spot. We have a lot of teams in front of us, though. Uh, we have the Bills, the Bengals, Jets, and Texans. They all need to lose out. We need to win out, and then we need to win the tiebreaker. We also need the Colts to lose out as well. So a lot of work for us to do here, but it all starts with us next game. Uh, it's all for naught if we don't win this game. This is a big game against the Chiefs. We're going to play at the Chiefs. Must win situation for us. Uh, we just got our butt waxed by the New England Patriots. Uh, the 11-3 the New England Patriots who clinched a playoff berth after that win. Uh, but we need to fight for our playoff hope coming up here against the Chiefs. Right into the action here, boys. We're playing under the lights, the big lights here against the Chiefs. They take an early 7-0 lead. We're going to need to to have a big field goal right there. Okay, so now 7-3, Paxton Lynch driving down the field. Uh, you know... Fighting for your playoff hopes against a division rival on the road. Uh, right now, we're stepping up to the plate. Two field goals so far. Our defense seems to be playing well as we head into the late part of the second quarter. We've only given up a field goal. One touchdown. That's a big play right there. Mark Sanchez comes in the game. Mark Sanchez. I'm starting to think we probably should have started him over the course of the season. He so far has come into big moments and played really well. Another blocked field goal by our defense. Absolute savage. Oh, so now the Chiefs go up by one with a field goal. Heading into halftime, and we gave up a tutty. Oh, we gave up a tutty. Not good. Down eight. Come down the field. We get the touchdown. Go for two and get it. Tie the game. We're about to head into the fourth. Throw your fours up. What oh, touchdown, Mark Sanchez. Emmanuel Sanders. Do you believe in miracles, Mark Sanchez? Apparently he does. Come on, defense. All right, tie ball game. Mark Sanchez, we need one of those drives. We need another fourth quarter comeback drive, Mark Sanchez. Go ahead, be great, kid. Come on. Come on, Mark. Come on, Mark. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think we're going to lose. They're going to kick. We're going to. Field goal. Field goal. We're up. We're up. 15 seconds. Come on, defense. We win. We keep our playoff hopes alive. We win. Down go the Chiefs. Down go the Chiefs. All right, now it just depends on the other other teams. Oh no, bad news, and there it is. And there it is, we have no chance to get in. We have no chance to get in. The Chiefs, even though we got the victory there, we can't come back, because even if we win, we'll be eight and eight. Chiefs, even if they lose, they'll be nine and seven, so we have no shot at getting in the playoffs. I think I'm the worst coach of all time. Maybe I'm just good on the sticks. Maybe I should just only stay on the paddles. Let's simulate the last game, see how we do. Let's take a look at the stats from a diff disappointing season. Mark Sanchez turned out to be the guy. Um, he turned it on late in the season there. You can see he started playing well up, up to four yards, a care lot roll. He was out for seven weeks. You gotta think if he uh, if he was able to play for going home, uh, we're not making it to the playoffs. We're not going. That's two, 
True 32s in a row where we don't make the playoffs. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching True 32. The buck stops here, a Denver Broncos franchise rebuild. We will see you guys next time on True 32. Make sure to leave it in the comments below. Who do you want to see in the next True 32? What team do you want to see me completely ruin, run into the ground, and knock it in the playoffs? I'll be happy to do that for you if you'd like. Uh, and we'll see you guys next time on the next True 32.